Lego Lego so, so um, I've been driving lately from JRCC's videos. I stumbled upon a VIP test where he drove one of his RC cars through deep muddy water. I asked him how he was able to shift his motors with electronics from water. He simply replied that he uses waterproof parts. I have to admit I was quite jealous for some. When it comes to designing Legos that can be used outside, you don't get waterproof parts. If you get your power function elements wet, it's highly probable that they'll get damaged. All that got me thinking. How do I build a vehicle that is at least water resistant? The first step is to give the vehicle's motors and electronics as much ground clearance as possible. But even with a lot of ground clearance, they could get splashed on or in deep water they could end up submerged. To avoid this, the second step would be to encase all of your sensitive equipment in a water resistant compartment that could keep water outside in more extreme scenarios. This is where experience from LEGO shipbuilding comes in. Wrap the water resistant compartment with a piece of plastic garbage bag and you're done. batteries and electronics are mostly protected from water. So please join me as I drive this baby in the mountains on water and ship. The problem with this concept, however, is transferring power from the motors to your vehicle's trucks or wheels, since, as you can see, you don't get a lot of options regarding motor placement. I have to say I'm not very happy with the way my transmission design has ended up. It took me about 4 hours to build this vehicle. Not a lot of thought went on the design, and absolutely no time went on testing it before I brought it up here. I can't say I'm confident it'll work. So what went wrong with my transmission? The answer lies all the way to the back of the vehicle and those little guys that couldn't handle the torque of the motors.
the water resistant casing though was a success. Everything was nice and dry after all of my tests. Under the gremlins in my transmission, the best course of action would be to simplify the design as much as possible. Over-engineered components have a greater chance of failing than simple ones. I already have a possible solution in mind. After a complete redesign of the vehicle's back end, I could restart my tests at a much more beautiful location. This waterfall is located in a mountainous region of Athens, just a 30 minute drive from the city centre. Unfortunately, I couldn't shoot a lot of footage. There were people taking a swim in the pools and resting along the riverbank. I don't think I'm allowed to upload them on YouTube. The second test run went well, everything worked, until I destroyed the vehicle's transmission, again. This time, however, it wasn't a design flaw. The enemy was this. Small pieces of mineral rocks that can be found in beaches and riverbeds. Once those little guys get stuck between truck pieces or even worse, between gears, the outcome is total destruction. Legos are made from hard plastic and are indeed very durable, but no match for rocks. So, am I happy with my results? Yes. Am I happy with my design? No. By the time you watch this video, my little tracked explorer will have been erased from existence, and I'm not going to make any building instructions. If I ever return to Amphibious vehicles, it will be with a completely new design. If you like watching a grown man play with his Legos, hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Remember to keep building epic.